स्मार्ट हो रहा है इंडिया जैसे इंडिया में बना एलिस्टा स्मार्ट एलईडी टीवी विद वर्ल्ड क्लास क्लैरिटी एंड अमेजिंग फीचर्स Your last international match was the World Cup final at home. What was that feeling? Was that the biggest peak of your career? Yeah, hundred percent. If you speak about highlights of my career, I'll definitely say that the World Cup was one of my highlights of of my career. Especially getting over the line with the semi-final. I think in the past World Cups when we made it to the semi-final, we never could get over the line. But what what excited me the most about this World Cup was playing in front of my home crowd. Playing in front of my family, in front of my friends, in front of all my fans. So it's been really amazing. I mean, if you speak about World Cup, World Cups, I think this is the one World Cup that actually stood out to me. So I was really excited to play um, alongside all my fellow teammates once again, and then obviously just having my friends and family there was really amazing. I I really enjoyed this World Cup. I was at the tournament and I was at the final, and it was incredible to look even from the outside. So what was that feeling in front of that large sold-out home crowd at the home World Cup final? Yeah, actually, I had this question asked um, a few interviews ago, and I and I also said if it wasn't for the home crowd, I don't actually think we'd have got over the line. I think I'm sure a lot of people heard here the night nice interview where she said the crowd actually got to them, and I think if you speak about that, it just that that crowd gave us an extra boost to actually get over the semi-final line, and knowing that I had to obviously defend in the 13th run in that last six balls of my over, I think not, I wasn't actually. Nervous or anything, I just, I just knew at the top of my run up that this was going to be it. So I knew already before the time that you know what I can get my team over the line. So it was just, it was an amazing feeling once again. Just home crowd, my parents was there, all my family. So I just, I enjoyed it. So what was that final feeling after that final goal you scored in that semi final? I actually cried. I think just that feeling of getting over that semi final line, where in the past we always stuck. And we always couldn't get over that semi-final line. So obviously, to get over that semi-final line to make history with the South African women's team, the feeling—I don't even think I could explain the feeling to you because it was just—it was—it was a great feeling. And obviously, I think I shed a lot of tears after after the game when I went to my mom and I gave her. I just cried because I couldn't believe that we actually got over that semi-final line. Yeah. And what was the family's reaction? They were they were thoroughly excited. I mean, when I spoke to my mom, she said, "You guys finally did it." And now, obviously. Going into the final, obviously against Australia, we knew it was always going to be tough against Australia. So for us just to go out there and obviously still have fun, still back our skill, and we always thought that you know we still had a chance of winning Australia. And then just for us to go out there and the way we played, the way we portrayed our skills throughout that whole World Cup was it was it was exciting. And when we started off against Sri Lanka, no one actually thought that we were going to lose that game. But I think that just gave us actually that wake up call to actually play to the best that we can play and play as a unit, play as a team. And I think that's what we what we actually did after we played against um, Sri Lanka, going into New Zealand, and things like that. So it was just it was you know, it was great it was a great feeling. After that incredible semi final, you were at the media so I was there at home. So you, we were talking to my son, you and Ayabonga. And did you guys have the any idea how much the enormity of that thing you have to have achieved becoming the first South African side man or woman to qualify for an ICC World Cup event final? Yeah, I mean, if you speak about the ICC World Cup, I, I still don't believe that we actually made it to the final. Thinking about how we actually started off the World Cup to actually end up in the final was really amazing. And then also, we also had chats about how we want to go about playing our game. Like obviously, the try on myself, Marizan Cup, and Aya Bonga Kaka. We always have that communication with each other, that partnership of knowing what's happening with the wicket, so we can always pass on our knowledge, so we know exactly how to hit our strides when we're at the top of our run up. So it's very important for us to obviously share our knowledge like we did. In that World Cup, and I just think that the way we shared our knowledge, the way we played together as a unit, I think that got us actually over the line, over the semi-final line, and obviously making it into the finals as well. Talking of the trio, you, my son, and I, Bonga. So, what are the memories of playing with them? Yeah. So, if you speak about memories, I think we all have different characters. We, I, Bonga, is a bit quiet. Tapi has the feistiness in her as well, and then me, the aggression with speed. Tapi can bring the ball, swing the ball in and out. Aya Bonga has a lot of great slow ball. She bowls very at the gate where she bowls yorkers, and then also the in swingers that she bowls as well. I think the way we portrayed our skills in the World Cup was really amazing. And if we talk about memories, I think. 
the partnerships are getting so much of wickets over the over the the years that myself Marizan myself Marizan Cup and I have played. I think that was that will always be in our memory, leaving the legacy of South African cricket of other punches of wickets we took in every game. And obviously, when I didn't take wickets, Kapi took wickets. If Kapi didn't take wickets, it's either I or me. So that was just great to have that spell of you know what we had the three of us actually communicated really well with each other, and we got each other and we got each other's back all the time whenever we bowled. Now let's talk to you. You are considered one of the most serious fast bowlers in the world. So, how do you want people to remember you as, or how do you want people to remember your international career? Yeah, so I always speak about obviously we first human being before we cricketers. So all the professionalism actually starts outside of cricket, your lifestyle, the way you actually what you do actually behind the scenes, like what you do at home, what you do when you go to training. A lot of people don't see the hard work that's put behind the scenes. But I always say the legacy I want to leave is that I want the youngsters to look up to me and say, you know what, I want to be a Shubnam Ismail. I want to take as much wickets as she does. Obviously. Leaving a legacy doesn't always mean taking a lot of wickets, but it also means the type of person that you are on and off the field. And I think the humble person that I am, I'm actually very soft. I might just be feisty on the field, but a lot of people don't actually know what type of person I am off the field. I'm very soft. I cry actually very easy, but I don't necessarily show it. So yeah, it's just if you speak about legacy, I'll definitely say I want the youngsters to look up to me, not only as a cricketer, but as a human being as well. So when you think of Shamnam Ismail, the first thing you notice is the speed. So how does it Feel to bowl that fast. You know what? I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of people ask me this question, and I don't even know myself how I bowl so fast. All I know is that dynamite come in small pot packages. <laughs> but yeah, for me, it's just really simple. I don't really worry much about my speed, but I always worry about consistency. And I think once you become consistent, then you can obviously worry about how fast you want to bowl. It obviously depends like what gym work you do, what you do behind the scenes. So it's always been one of my goals to become the fastest bowler in the world. And obviously now, while I, while I retired from South African cricket, I'm still in the global league. We are still to obviously maintain my body and obviously go out there and still do what I do best. You bowled the fastest delivery in the T20 World Cup in Australia in 2020. You bowled the fastest delivery in the T20 World Cup at home. Then you bowled the fastest delivery in the Women's Premier League. So can you talk to those through those moments? Yeah, of course, my name. I mean, if you look at the big screen after the replay when you bowl, you always think about what could I have done better. So I didn't actually know that I bowled the fastest delivery, I'm not going to lie. I think after the game, a lot of people send me WhatsApps and send me DMs on my Instagram saying, Shubs, you bowled actually the quickest ball where I don't actually recognize. I think it's more the adrenaline that pumps in me and that actually makes me want to bowl more quicker and more consistent and get more wickets. I think it's all about the adrenaline and how I feel on the day to actually execute to my skill and obviously execute to the fastest ball that I can bowl. But at least it's not always that behind my head where I'm thinking, I need to bowl quick, I need to bowl quick. I think it's more of a feeling that I know if my rhythm is going well, I know that I'll actually execute and bowl to the best that I can. If you talk about Shabnam Ismail, if you go back to the young Shabnam Ismail, how do you look back at your career? Did you fulfill all the dreams you had as a kid? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think there's still one more way I couldn't get Goswami's record and I'm sure that she's happy that I retired. <laughs> but yeah, if you speak about obviously fulfilling my dreams, I always say playing for my country, that was always a dream of mine. And obviously retiring now, I know that at least I fulfilled my dream. I fulfilled my duties as a, as a fast bowler in the South African team. So I definitely say that I did fulfill my dreams. And I'm still carrying on as well, which is, which is so exciting to look forward to. We all talk about good times and the journey of a cricketer. But has there been a moment where you felt, I can't do this anymore, I want to give up? No, not really. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I think if you speak about um, me retiring, I think it was something that I always spoke about to my to um, Cricket South Africa and also to the psychologist where she was helping me. Obviously, through the moments where it was difficult for me, where it was fitness, it was training every single day. So it had become tough for me. But I always felt that once I was in that team environment of the South African women's team, I always felt comfortable. I always felt myself where I could actually speak up and still be myself. So there was never a moment where I felt claustrophobic. So in that sense, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to put SA Cricket aside and still play all the global leagues where I now then want to obviously portray the family part of spending more time with my family because I'm actually, I'm based in Johannesburg and my family is based in Cape Town. So there was times where I actually never saw them for months and months where I missed my mom's birthday, I miss my dad's birthday, my nephews and my niece. So I never really got time to spend with them when now I can train when I need to train, especially before um, the global leagues. And then also spend a lot of time more with my family because they're at the age now where they're actually very old. So I want to spend more time with them. And obviously, I don't want to regret anything. 
So I'd rather spend the time now with him, the quality time now with him as a, at that age now. So I'm, I'm actually happy with what I'm doing at the moment, spending more time with him. And then obviously when cricket does pop up with the Global Leagues, I'm willing to go on that tour and give my 200% as well. Because it's very important to actually um, keep your family intact and then also play cricket. So you must have that balance in life of obviously having your family time, having your downtime, and then also going to cricket and giving 200%. I think that is the important part for me at the moment. Smart ho hai India. Jaisi India mein bana Alistair Smart LED TV with world-class clarity and amazing features. 